They were making this amazing 3D animated text, which you can apply to Figma, Framer, Webflow, whatever. And it's going to be super easy. You don't have to have zero knowledge of 3D animation or anything else. The first thing we need to do is go to my favorite 3D website called spline.design. Once you log in, click on this new file button on the top right. Now you could just bring in 3D text, give it a cursive font and that would be it. But for today, we want something a little more customized and a little more us, a little more personal. So we'll just exit here, delete everything that you see on screen. As a next step, I have drawn out this little image. You can screenshot this and use it for your own practice. However, whatever you're gonna write, draw it out on a piece of paper, take a screenshot of it and drag it right into Spline. As you can see, I've dragged this little image here. I will zoom out. This will essentially be our template of sorts. Pardon my poor handwriting, of course. Now comes the tricky but fun part. On the top, there is this vector option. Click on this little vector or pen tool. And just like we do in Figma or any other tool, we will start drawing across this outline. Just tap at the start of F. Then place the second point closer to this curve. Then the third point above this curve and so on and so forth. Also try to apply all these little dots or points just like you would be writing something out. So whichever direction the points are going, that is the direction the animation will also happen. All right, I have basically outlined everything, but this looks like a very weird shape, correct? Now we want to convert this into an actual line. On the right, if you look at this under shape, there's something called convert to path. This is exactly what we want to do. Now that we've converted it to path, we have this really thick line. To decrease the thickness under path extrusion, change the size from 100 to something like 20 and the other Y as well to 20. Now, as you can see, we have a better understanding of the shape now. For now, I can click on the image in the background and lock it from this layers window on the left. I'm gonna double click this little shape that we've created. And I'm gonna zoom in by holding Command or Alt and just zooming in. Now, as you can see, we need to give the right curves. To do that, on the top right, we have this Bend tool. We will click on the Bend tool and we'll drag across each of these circles. And as you can see, the line starts to bend. We will adjust it according to our preferences. And you have to do the same for each one of these. Make sure it's going in the smooth direction rather than looking like this. It's looking straight or rounded like this. Again, if you're new to this, don't worry. You'll make some mistakes, but you'll find your way at the end. All right, as you can see, I have curved everything out and I've created this stylized logo of sorts. I'm gonna remove the image finally, or you can hide it as well, it's up to you. Now let's come to the colors and the effects and the gradients. On the right, if I scroll down, we have this thing called material. Under material, you can change the color to anything. As you can see, blue, white, green, orange, whatever you like. Since we're creating a Figma title, let's go with the Figma colors. So for that, we'll click on this little chevron. We'll click on this and under color, you'll find a lot of these options. I want gradient. So under gradient, what I can do is I'll click on it and I can add as many colors as I want. For this, of course, I'll want a very light red or more of an orange, I'd say. Then I want a beige of sorts. Then for the next color, I want a purple. Now that we've added all these wonderful colors to our board, what we need to do is change it from linear to smooth and the direction I want and the angle I want to change to 90. But this still looks very dull and boring and weird, to be honest. So for this, I'm gonna change the lighting from this gray color to this white color. I will find the right white. If you want to add some glow to this text, deselect everything and on the right, there's something called post-processing. I will turn this on and, and right next to Bloom, there is this little icon, this eye icon. I'll click on this and as you can see, the glow is added immediately. I'll change the, I can always decrease it from 100 to something like 80 if it's too bright or even less, maybe something like 50. And I can even change the settings from here. So I can increase the, the intensity, I can make it less or more, I can uh, increase or decrease the blur as well. And I can increase or decrease the threshold as well. Now comes the time to animate. We have added that light, we have added gradient, everything. Now we will animate this. Now animation is pretty simple in Spline. I will click on this. I will double click to make sure. I will click and highlight this text here. 
And under the right properties panel, you'll find events and states. First, we want to focus on states. The first state is the base state. Under base state, I will make some changes. Now I want to change the depth under path extrusion. I will, I will reduce it from one to zero. And as you can see, when I'm reducing it, it's actually going in a flow like this. Not only is the text changing, it's also changing the gradient and the lighting and everything, which adds to the 3D effect. Now on the right, we will set the state with full depth or a one depth. Now we have two states set up. I will now add the animation event. So under events, I'll click on this plus icon. And under this, we have start. You can change this to anything. You can make this animation happen on hover. I will change this to key press and I'll press the space bar to make this pre uh, activate on space bar. Ba and the transition remains fine. I can always change this from ease in out to something like spring. Spring is definitely a little more fun. Now, if I play this and press space, as you can see, the animation occurs, which is super fantastic. Now let's embed this cool 3D text into our Figma files or any other design tool that you have. And it's pretty much universal. So I'm going to open up. So I'm going to open up Figma officially here. And this design has been provided by Untitled UI. I think you should check it out. This is a nice little UI kit you guys can check out. Now for in the middle section right here, I'm going to draw a rectangle. So I can always pick the rectangle tool from top left and draw a nice little rectangle, which fits the entirety of this area. I can increase or decrease the size as well. It, it, it doesn't have to be picture perfect. Now I will reduce the opacity from the right to from 100 to zero, but make sure the fill opacity is zero, not the layer opacity. While this rectangle is selected, I will open up a plugin from this resource panel on the top. I'll change to plugin and I will click on Anima. You can always search for Anima and you'll find it. I'm gonna run it for now. Anima essentially allows us to embed anything into our design files. In this case, if I go back to Chrome, and click on export, I can export this as a embed URL, which means you can embed this into a live website as well on through Webflow or Framer. Now inside this embed, we'll have to make some changes. For example, I, for example, I can go to place settings and we, and we need to remove the background color to hide. And I'm going to update the public URL. Now, when we copy this link, now we need to copy this link under embed code inside Anima and paste it right here. I'm going to click on save and preview. Now, if I press space, as you can see, the nice little animation takes place. You can edit this, you can add gradients, you can add lights, you can add whatever you like. At any point of time, you want to publish this as a website. You can do it with Anima again, go to Anima and say, and say publish. In fact, I'll have a link to this published website in the description. So you can always check it out and see for yourself. I'm also going to put down links as well as some other spline files. You can always copy some elements from once you've created this design, make sure you're sharing it with me on Twitter, Instagram, etc. Just tag me on these social media platforms and the best ones I'll definitely share on my stories, etc. I hope you like this video. If you did, make sure you like the video. It shows me a lot of support as well as click on the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on videos every week. Share this with your design buddies and I will see you in the next video. Until next time, take care. God bless.